A warm welcome to you all this uh, afternoon uh, to the USP's anniversary celebration presentation. My research topic was the effect of face feeding on the reproductive performance of PG Fantastic Eels and the grazing condition. The essence of my, uh, my work was compelled on the large number of uh, local feed resources available in the Pacific Island countries, particularly in Fiji, Samoa, Vanuatu, and the Solomon Islands. To that, my, my objectives were to investigate the effect of uh, supplementation at the gestation, lambing, and weaning periods on the ewe performance and reproductive performance and their lamb performance and survival. This study was carried out at the Nawai Dampo Quarantine Station on the western side of Viti Levu in Fiji, where 58 ewes were randomly were selected and randomly divided into two groups, which are supplemented and non-supplemented groups. The ewes in the non-supplemented group was without any supplementation throughout the study period. On the other hand, the supplemented group was given supplementary feed at day 70 after mating up, up to lambing until weaning. As a result, supplementation uh, had the highest fertility, prolificacy and fecundity rates. However, the the mortality rate was lower in the non-supplemented group compared to the supplemented group. The effect of uh, supplementation was significant at the ewe's weight and body condition at weaning and milk yield. Their lamps performance uh, at birth Supplementation had no significant uh, difference, but at weaning, supplementation effect of supplementation was significant on the lamb performance. To that, the con my research concludes that the supplementation improved live weight, body condition score at weaning, milk yield, reproductive performance of Fiji Fantastic Eels. Secondly, supplementation of use did not affect lamb performance at weaning, but at, at birth, sorry. But lastly, at weaning, significant effect of supplementation was shown on lamb performance. To that, my research recommends that supplementation during wet season is not beneficial, but supplementary feeding should be, should be done at paturition to weaning with daily provision of supplementary feeding at uh, before and after grazing. To that, my research uh, is a manageable, with, a, with this research, it's manageable uh, strategy of supplementary feeding for use does not require expertise, advanced technology, or complex feeding formula. It is relatively easy for farmers to carry out in their daily routines in their farm. To that, I conclude my presentation this afternoon in a very big Vinavo level, and thank you for your attention. Okay, the floor is open. Dr. Diara. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I will be presenting um, on one of the objectives of my research, titled uh, Feeding Value of Copra Meal in uh, Corn Animal Protein Meal-Based Diets and Enzyme Supplementation for Broilers. Just to introduce uh, the topic, this is uh, based on a preliminary study where uh, we found that 15% of copra meal was better utilized in uh, animal protein sources than uh, plant protein sources. It, give the, it gave the best uh, growth performance and uh, the highest digestibility means uh, less was excreted in the environment and the least cost. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, copra meal has uh, 
high saturated fatty acids and it is implicated in cardiovascular diseases which is why it is important to see uh, how, how healthy the product is. This table shows uh, that copra meal has high saturated fatty acid compared to fish meal. The objective of the research is to study the effects of increasing copra meal uh, in uh, corn animal protein based diets and chalenzyme supplementation on broiler growth, carcass measurements and fatty acid composition and cholesterol content. The research was uh, conducted at uh, Ratish poultry farm in uh, Fiji and the figures show the facilities that is available uh, for research. Uh, the, these are the diets uh, that were formulated. You have, uh, we have uh, two control diets that is uh, with and without enzyme and uh, increasing level of copra meal that is 15, 30 and 45 percent uh, without enzyme and the same level with enzyme. So basically this uh, here two factors are being looked at here that is uh, copra meal level and enzyme, enzyme level. So this was a factorial experiment laid in CRD having um, uh, four replicates and uh, the birds there were 168 birds used in this experiment and they were laid in 28 uh, cages having six birds per cage. Looking at the growth uh, performance results, uh, feed intake and weight gain were uh, affected by the interaction and where you can see that feed intake was more, feed intake and weight gain was more pronounced or more improved on 30% uh, copra meal and it was improved with enzyme addition. However, uh, FCR was not affected by the interaction. These are the images of six weeks old uh, broilers fed uh, formulated diets. Looking at the carcass uh, measurements, uh, all the parameters were uh, statistically uh, not affected by the interaction, which means that uh, 45, up to 45 percent it can be used without affecting the uh, carcass uh, traits. Uh, looking at the fatty acid uh, composition and uh, cholesterol content of the broiler breast meat, the saturated fatty acid uh, composition was reduced with enzyme addition at uh, 30% and uh, at 45% the monounsaturated fatty acid was uh, reduced. However, polyunsaturated fatty acid and cholesterol content was not uh, affected. To conclude, 30% of dietary copra meal uh, depresses growth but is improved with uh, enzyme addition at 45% inclusion level. Even with enzyme, it does not restore the lost growth. And copra meal has uh, no effect on uh, cholesterol level but uh, it affects the fatty acid composition of broiler meat. We recommend that uh, more research into higher levels of enzyme and feed processing to be uh, con concluded, conducted. <coughs> and uh, at this point, I would like to thank USP for uh, sponsoring, uh, so which made this research possible, and uh, Professor Ravindran of Massey University in New Zealand for providing free analysis of protein sources. Thank you for listening. A recommendation is that uh, you, you can do more research into higher enzyme uh, inclusion level because maybe at 45% uh, there was uh, le less enzyme which uh, did not allow the utilization. Maybe it could be because of the enzyme. That, way, that is why there was low, le low growth, I mean slow growth. 30% is okay, but above 45%, maybe it was because the enzyme level was low. So maybe you can use higher enzyme level to see uh, whether it can uh, take care of that 45% uh, enzyme, I mean the copra meal level for utilization. Yes, 30% is uh, fine, yeah. Other queries? With this research, your master's research and then PhD now completed,
Can you come up with a concocted feed that can be used? I mean, can you say, okay, this much of X, this much of Y, this much of Z can be a substitute for feed that we import? Can you say that from this research? Yes, uh, thank you for that uh, uh, question. Yeah, based on uh, the master's level, that was the cheapest uh, cost. And then at this level, I'm also uh, improving the utilization uh, at higher levels with enzymes so that uh, there is efficient use of copra meal. Because it is cheap and it is available in the region, it, higher levels could be uh, uh, included and then it could be improved to use in poultry diets. And um, at this level, yes, we can come up with the feed to be used at the farm. Because most of the ingredients that is there in my, in my diet, diet table, you can see, um, most of these ingredients are already available locally. So this is going to reduce cost. These things are all available. Enzyme is the only one that is imported. And it is very cheap. If you are going to have in large quantity, you can, you can get it cheap. I just want to follow up. I think it will be very, very important because 60% of the cost of production of either eggs or meat is feed, imported feed. So if you have the result, I think you should come up with uh, maybe a couple of recommendations of for corporate feed locally, using locally available mm -hmm. ingredients or cheaper ingredients. And then we can try, and then we can try feeding our poultry here. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, right now, uh, we can use 30%, up to 30% uh, copra meal inclusion with enzyme right now. But there is more research needs to be done uh, so that we can include more levels of copra meal. But right now, we can use 30% copra meal. Yes, it is a big amount. Yes. Yes, sir. Along with this information, if you put the uh, monetary values, what is the expenditure, what is the cost reduction, then uh, the question is going to be very well addressed. I think you will be having all those uh, information. Yes, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, suggestion. Yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Uh, in fact, uh, at the master's level, I did the uh, cost analysis, and this combination, uh, copra meal, 15% copra meal with the animal protein sources was the cheapest feed out of the five that I used at master's level. And then this one is a follow-up on from that study. So I'm using more levels and then to see whether enzyme can also assist. Because it, copra meal has a lot of uh, um, fibers and this is a complex structure, so it needs to be broken down using enzyme so that it can be utilized uh, well by the poultry. Yeah, and uh, we, are, I'm still, uh, we are still working on uh, this, uh, the cost analysis because this, this result was just compiled for this presentation. So that is why uh, we still have to work on that, yeah. So maybe in the final thesis we'll have that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, the presentation that I was, I'm going to uh, discuss with you I'm not going, this is not, it's, it's got nothing to do with any conclusion nor results. This is just a, in the planning stage uh, presentation. Okay, the, uh, this presentation is, <coughs> it's, a, uh, it's a research that has been approved by the Pacific Islands University Research Network. Okay, so the, the, uh, uh, this research that has been approved by Biren, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration research uh, <coughs> amongst four universities. The University of South Pacific, the University of New Caledonia, uh, the University of uh, uh, Papua New Guinea, and the last but not the least, the University of uh, the Sol National University of the Solomons. Okay, so this is I'm not, I'm not going to talk about any feed or livestock or any crops 
This is a social scientist research, okay? I'm talking, this research is about people, the livelihood of people. It's about poverty. It's about human health, nutrition, diets, and all those things. So even though it's more or less slightly uh, differ from the, the previous uh, discussions, but this is specifically people research. Okay, the, uh, the, the title of the, uh, the research uh, that was approved by Bjorn is Addressing Threats to Traditional Food Security and Diet Quality in the Rural Areas. So these are <coughs> the researchers. Uh, Professor Olivier, uh, University of New Caledonia, Juan Nico Amosa, Agronomist, School of Agriculture and Food Technology, USP, Alafua, uh, Professor Alan Kodame, uh, the School of Science and Technology, University of Koroga in Papua New Guinea, uh, Dr. Severine Boat, Institute Agronomique, New York, Caledonia, University of New Caledonia, Dr. Satu, uh, from the Solomon Islands uh, National University, uh, Dr. Paul Mali from uh, University of Korea as well, and last but not least, uh, La Meta. <laughs> the uh, duration of the project is two years. Okay, the uh, the beauty of this research is that uh, we'll be using postgrad students as researchers. That is the beauty of this research. Okay, the beauty not only it's a combination of people with specific disciplines, specializations. There's a nutritionist, there's a, an agronomist, there's a social scientist, geographer, and dietitian. Not only that, but we'll be using, this project will lead into one of the master's de degree from one of the students that I'm supervising right now. It will lead into that, because I'm, I'm going to use uh, VGN for the VGN part, because the university, the, the, this, there are case studies in this whole, uh, this whole study. The, the, the study covers Fiji, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, Solomons, and Vanuatu. There are five islands covered in this uh, whole research. And Samoa. The only thing about Samoa is uh, it's, a bit, the, the, it's, it's a more or less an outlier, so to speak. What I'm saying is, since there is rural areas in Samoa, but modernity is pervasive there. You know what I mean? They have this. They have this. Even in the rural areas, they have. I'm not joking. I'm not saying anything to, you know, Samoa to be up there, no. <coughs> but what I'm saying is, Samoa is more or less an outlier when it comes to this. And that is why we are more or less careful to to, to, what is it, to bring in Samoa into, into this uh, whole uh, project. Because in the rural areas, everything is there. Okay, whatever we have in town, they have it there. And that is the motto by our former Prime Minister. And it happened. And uh, we are also careful to bring in Fiji, but uh, the understanding is there are still some rural communities within Fiji in which Electricity and some of the, uh, the modern uh, amenities of life still not yet arrived there. You know what I mean, so to speak. Uh, so that is more or less the beauty of this whole thing. It's the uh, amalgamation not only the researchers, but also the postgrad students. As I've said, this will lead into one of the masses. <clears throat> Two masses. <laughs> So the summary of the, the project for the non-specialists is that <coughs> this proposed project concerns the, uh, it's all about food production. Uh, nowadays, we are driven by the market and academics. They're trying to find that, uh, ignoring the first and foremost of producing food, okay? That is, it's more or less, they're, they're trying to come up with hybrids with good quality, uh, uh, what is it, marketable uh, uh, produce. Forgetting about what's happening out there in the rural areas. Traditionally, the, the first and foremost, uh, what is it, objective in the rural areas people's life is consumption, food. Okay, but we, 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 we tend to care less about those things. We are driven by this. 
You know, the, the slippery of the dollar. It's all about money, 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 money. Okay, and that is where the problem is. So that is where this project comes in. What, is the, what seems to be the impact of that commoditization of products and its impact to the community way of life? What, that, that seems to be the question. What is it? What is it? So that is, it's more or less, uh, we are looking at 50 households. For one case study, 50 households. So there will be two case studies within each country. So there will be two case studies of 50 households. Households in terms of those who live together, eat together, sleep together, and pray to God together. Okay, so that is it. So if you multiply, say for instance, if one household consists of five, five members, then you multiply by five, 50, that would be 250, uh, what is it, uh, new uh, respondents for this, because there's a lot of, the methodology in this uh, whole research is, is convoluted with so many technical parts of it. The, uh, there's a factor, it's a food factor questionnaire. Each and every one in the household will have to answer the questionnaire. What you've eaten yesterday, what did you drink, this and, it's, it's like that. Each member of the household, uh, rather than the, uh, the, what is it, that high thing, the, the index thing, they come up, the uh, Nicoldon, uh, Nicoldonian uh, uh, people, they come up with one uh, measure of, because we in the Pacific, we tend to like that, but it's just because it, it's our, the frame that was given to us. It's not by design, by us. And that is why we tend to, so they have a special uh, way of measuring that. It's about the waist, the height, uh, waist, height, and there's something else. Okay? <laughs> and there, it's, it's a, there are three indicators there. Because this, this methodology is used by dietitians. But mind you, I'm not a dietitian. That is why I tend to forget that one. <clears throat> okay? So, all in all, that is basically what it is. There are about 13 slides in here. I had a chat with my colleague, uh, Dr. Patti, uh, this morning. I said, I can talk for an hour, just two slides. And then, oh, you have to put in what? There are 13 slides. <laughs> if I keep on talking for the 13 slides, I'm, I'm telling you, you'll be here up till before that uh, dinner tonight. <laughs> because I talk a lot, and I like talking. Okay, and that is, so simply, the message that I'm trying to uh, portray today is <laughs> It's more or less, this uh, research is <coughs> composed of four universities. It's a collaboration between four universities, and it's a collaboration of specialists different from within dif different disciplines. Uh, and it's about health, it's about food production, uh, uh, the objectives, look like you know, questions. Uh, objectives, health, and non-communicable diseases, because it leads to that. Okay, we we only we were only given fifty thousand dollars for this, but if this one goes smoothly, God willing, then there will be a bigger one. There will be a bigger project based on this. Uh, it's just unfortunate that uh, Professor Chito Vanuala is not here, but uh, I'm here to uh, give thanks and gratitude for Professor Chito, as well as the Burian Committee for approving this project. But mind you, it covers five islands in the Pacific region. Uh, Fiji, Solomon, Vanuatu, uh, Papua New Guinea, and Samoa. And it's for the sake of the students as well. That's about it.